ed yo man there's been some some movement there's been some movement we we continue our off-season talk here here we go here we go uh-huh mm-hmm. this is the believe 49ers podcast on the believe podcast network he is super bowl champion eric davis i'm rashawn haylock uh, plenty to get to on this show uh, as always, though, we want to encourage you and remind you to continue to download, subscribe, rate, and review. We're located wherever you find your podcast. If there's a like button or a follow button on your particular podcast subscription service, go ahead and hit that like or follow button. Uh, you can feel free to get involved in the conversation on social media. I'm at R. Haylock on Twitter. He's at underscore Eric Davis underscore. And on Instagram, I'm at Watch Ray Ray. He is at Eric Davis underscore 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 underscore. That's four underscores. Uh, as always, we're brought to you by the fine folks at Bet Online. Of course, look, you guys know the drill by now. I mean, look, they got everything you need. I mean, football may be a wrap, uh, but look, we still got basketball. We still got um, ED's favorite time of the season, uh, March Madness coming up here. We know how he loves that so much. Uh, Everything going on right now. You got the pro hoops, the college hoops as well, uh, NBA playoffs right around the corner. So from all the latest odds, totals, player performances, props to where the next fired head coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V to get started bet online the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games bet online where the game starts he is super bowl champion eric davis i'm rashawn haylock so ed uh there's been some movement and we promised the people on, on the last podcast that was called a tease in the business right so we tease it and here we go we come i was i was told a long time ago coming up in this business you if you tease it you got to do it, right? You, you got to deliver. You got to deliver, right? You can't you can't lie on the teases, right? You can't just just uh skip the teases, right? So uh if you tease it, you, you got to show it, right? That's, right? That's right. That's right. So, um there's been some 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 movement on the coaching staff already that that we've seen um up to this point. And of course, the biggest name is uh, Mike McDaniel, uh, getting the head coaching job with the Miami Dolphins, uh, the offensive coordinator from 2021. He's been the run game coordinator um, previously with the 49ers. And so he he's gone. He's going to get his opportunity to uh, to run his own organization in Miami. He's taking Wes Welker with him as well. Uh, and also John Embry, who uh, is the tight ends coach and, and former assistant head coach. He'll have that same responsibility. Uh, with the Dolphins now, uh, with Walker Welker Welker left. Uh, the reports out there is Embry was not retained, which is interesting. I think we'll get into that in a little bit. But prior to all this going down, uh, there was this uh, note out there about Anthony Lynn, you know, joining the organization in some capacity, offensive assistant or an analyst, this, that, or the other. And obviously it appeared that, you know, writing was on the wall. McDaniel probably was going to get a job somewhere. And so you bring a in per- perhaps to, to fill that vacancy. Um, we all know Kyle calls the plays, but he and Anthony Lynn have a very uh, strong relationship going back to when Lynn played for his dad. Uh, these are formidable years for Kyle, right? When you talking about his high school years. Uh, Anthony Lynn being a running back there, playing for for uh, for for Kyle's father out in Mike Shanahan out in out in Denver. Yep. So he he knows this offense, he knows this running game, you know, extremely well. Uh, what your thoughts of him joining uh, this coaching staff? I think it's a good move. Number one, this running game is his running game. <laughs> it's the running game that that he played in, excelled in, um, that he was part of uh, the coaching tree. Uh, you know, not only did he play for Mike Shanahan, he coached for Mike Shanahan. He's gone on, and this is also a guy that has experience as an offensive coordinator and a head coach. Uh, so all of those things come into play. So I think that's a good move when you get someone that understands the CEO just spot that a head coach is in. Because there are times that we we have often talked about the fact that, like, did Kyle necessarily need to make that and thing did he need to make that an issue did he need to bring that up and Anthony Lynn has learned 
some of those things as well. Because you all, you know, like like we talk about all the time, like being on radio, being on TV. The only way to know how to do TV is to be on TV. Yeah, you can take all the communication classes you want to, but until you get in front of the camera, you don't know how to be yourself. Until you are that head coach having to make those decisions, you don't know. We can all act like we know what it's like, but it's it's hard. Football is hard. Making decisions on the football field is hard. Um, Anthony's done that. And I think he's he's far better at it than people give him credit for, and his understanding of it is much better. Uh, yet he, he is very, very – two things. Run game, he understands. And the teams that he has been a coordinator for or, or coach for, they have always had good running uh, teams. Uh, uh, running, They've always had good run success, be it the quarterback or the running backs. That's always been a part of it. Um, the other thing, dude came up as a team's coach. And you lost your team's coach, so I wouldn't be surprised if he if he um, lends his ha- hands to that. that. That's another point, right? Um, High Tower going to the Bears, uh, so you you also got to feel that vacancy there with the with the special teams coordinator as well. And, and teams weren't special this year. <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. I mean, we 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 kind of joked about it. I mean, you go to Green Bay, you finally run into a team that's worse than you on teams than you are, and, and they, that kind of was the difference, right? Um, so it, it's there are a lot of so there are a lot of ways. W- w- what hat do you think eventually he wears? Uh, that's interesting. You know, immediately I thought, okay, it makes sense. They're just going to move him into the team's position, uh, but I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up an offensive coordinator. I really, really, you lost your run game coordinator. And you just said it. Kyle is really the play caller. Um, so I could see, I could see Anthony falling into that position. It, it makes sense. It's a good hire. That's what the guy does. That's, that's what, that's what he does. That's, that's who he has been uh, coming up as a coach. And, and he has had success with it. I mean, you, you know, this, this dude took, I ride to the playoffs. So, you you know, come on, you know, so it's, it's it says something about his ability to utilize the people that he has and understand what he has. Um, this is a guy that I could see now that you know what Debo can do. Bless you, man. Now that you know what Debo can do, I can definitely see him. Um, Thank you, brother. Using him and in, in, in that in the run game and, and finding different ways to be creative with him. So I, 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 right now, I'm, originally I, it was teams coach. I'm leaning towards offensive coordinator right now, and I think I'm going to stay in that lane. I, I find it interesting because, I mean, it's a good problem to have, right? I mean, this is a guy who can do a lot of different things, this is a guy that can wear many hats. He sat in that that head coaching chair before, and, and this is someone who Kyle respects. So it's someone who um, – who can have his his ear, right? On top of that, I don't recall, and you correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first head coach Kyle's had on his staff since being with the Niners. Um, I don't know if I'm missing yeah. anybody. Yeah. But I want, at least in the last couple of years, for sure. Yeah. Um, Raheem was never on his staff. No, and he, he and Raheem were close, obviously. Uh, yeah. But um, since, since becoming the head coach of the 49ers, I feel like he's he's never had a head coach or yeah. former head coach on his staff, right? So I think I think that speaks volumes. I, and I think that it shows maturity. That shows maturity as a coach. It, um, it, it does, and I think it's very very valuable because you have somebody you can throw stuff off of in that room who's been there before and understands what it's like. If you make this decision or you say this thing to the media or if this thing blows up or if you react to a situation a certain way, um, Anthony Lynn has been there before, right? He's been there, done that. So he, he yes. understands that aspect of it. Um, and there are certain things that you that you deal with as a head coach that unless you've been there, you know, guys in that room have no idea, right? And so oh. I, I think that I think that's huge, right? So. It's a guy that could wear many hats. It's a guy who certainly has Kyle's ear. Um, and, I mean, you look at the offensive coordinator position, you look at the run game coordinator opportunity, you look at the special teams opportunity, I think there's there's a lot of different ways you, you can go with that. When you look at, at McDaniel 
um, there's there's this this notion out there. Um, I mean, by all accounts, he's brilliant, right? And he's he's very creative in the run game, and he does a lot of things um, that you know may have gone underneath the radar. But you know, some of what we've saw over the last couple of years have been his 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 imprint has been on it. You know, especially as it relates to the running game. So, from that standpoint, I mean, how, how significant is is that loss? Is like it's like, only it's, a- like how how significant it, because. Like we talked about, like Kyle calls the plays, right? Yeah. You got, you got OC, you got run game coordinator, you got all these coordinators. What are we coordinating, right? When 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 Kyle's the one calling the plays, and and this really is Kyle's. I mean, he he was birthed in this offense, so to uh, speak. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, but still, um, what coordinators are going to put together? You're going to put together the plan. You're going to be looking at things, saying. You know, when, when someone's a run game coordinator, passing game coordinator, you're looking weeks out ahead. Because remember, Kyle doesn't have time to do all of that. Kyle has to oversee everything. And if Kyle is putting all of his time into watching the film and breaking down every little aspect of everything, um, then he's going to he's going to miss out on something else. There, there's no way. There just aren't enough hours in the day for him to pay attention to what what's the best way to for his D-line to attack a, an opposing offensive line? What's the best way for his secondary to attack a team's passing game? What's the best way for his offensive line to attack, uh, uh, you know, the front that you're going to play against? Uh, the best way for his running backs to be successful? All of these type things, you got to have people that are breaking it down. So that's where that comes into play when someone, like you have someone that you trust to not only do that research, but as you said, that, that they're that they are innovative of, enough to come up with schemes that can attack the next group that you're playing against. That's that's what you, what you need right there. So how if, how big the how big is the loss of McDaniel? That is that is determined by the replacement. Next man up. So if the next so if the next man up can do the job as well. No harm, no foul. If the next man up can do the job better, you just got better. That's the way it works. So, and it's no different than a player at, at any position. You, you know, if if Trey Lance can play quarterback better than Jimmy, great. If he's Jimmy, no harm, no foul. You're in the same spot. Is if he's not as good as Jimmy, then you, you there was a loss with Jimmy leaving. Yeah. So that that's that's how you have to look at it from the from the the coaching standpoint as well it's, it's all about who you bring in and we just already discussed that you're bringing in you're bringing in someone that i think can help tremendously this is the believe in 49ers podcast on the believe podcast network he is super bowl champion eric davis summer sean haylock uh ed we got a got we got a new um a new sponsor to to the program yeah absolutely this podcast is sponsored by better help online therapy and we want you guys to go to better help dot com slash 49ers and check this out um let me give it to you this way okay i'm gonna go through a bunch of analogies to to help describe um the best way to look at mental health okay if if we all get our cars tuned up right that's right something bigger from happening um you're gonna go get an annual checkup with your doctors you're gonna go to the gym to maintain your physical wellness right most people most people that I know they'll do chores around the house and clean things up to keep the house clean. So you're not living in a pigsty. Okay. So all of these type things, that's like going to therapy is routine maintenance uh, for your mental and emotional wellness and to help prevent a bigger problem down the road and better help is customized online therapy. That's offered. Uh, It offers videos, phone calls. Uh, You can even have live chats, sessions with your therapist and you can do so without seeing anyone on camera if that's how you feel about it uh, it's it's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communi- communicating with a therapist within 48 hours so why invest in everything else in your life your cars the cleaning the gym membership but not invest in your mind so this podcast is sponsored by better help and believe in 49er listeners you get 10% off the first month 
at betterhelp.com slash 49ers. That is B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash 49ers. Check it out. Uh, former Notre Dame and NFL offensive lineman Aaron Taylor tweeted something the other day. Mental health is health, right? Um, and, and I think that that's becoming even more prevalent uh, as the, the days have, have yeah. gone on. Um, yeah. Right. I, I think I think that's huge. And, and I think we've seen uh, the uprise of that over the last, you know, almost two years now that, that we've been here in this pandemic. Right. Like it's. Well, yeah, you've you've seen. Yes, you've definitely seen it. And you've seen a lot of athletes um, speak out on it. I mean, you're entertainers. You can reach a lot of people and you've seen guys reach out on it. And um, and I think more people are starting to realize, you know, I've said it forever that you're just human beings. Like you people get on the referees, they're like, like you do realize that's just a normal person. They make mistakes or they have likes, dislikes, all these type of things, coaches, players, everything. But these, um, these are incredible athletes doing incredible athletic, making incredible athletic feats. But at the end of the day, you're just people and people have problems, whether, whether you're playing a game or not. And yeah, so there's more light coming to it. Yeah. So yeah, take care of yourself. I also want y'all to know that, um, you know, speaking about coordinating, you know, my man did a number on that on that read there. You know, we we were we reached out to corporate uh, about Thanks. some assistance, and uh, it, it never came. So you know, sometimes you just got to step up. You got to take matters in your own hands. You know, and, and I think that's exactly what he did there. And the execution uh, was to a T, which is to be expected from him. And so, um, yeah, kudos Please. to you. Kudos. I appreciate you, my brother. People don't understand yeah. the struggle with these. Hey, things, they need to know. They need to know, you know, someone's got to be a voice, right? Someone's got to be a voice. I'll, I'll, I'll step on that. I'll, I'll have you. Know, like, like, look, look, people, see all of this, look, <laughs> all, all of this is what you're supposed to figure it out from, uh, you know, like, okay, figure this is, this is what we want you to say. Just figure it out in there. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> hey, hey, I just, you know, we, we're, we're transparent here on this pod. So, you know, we got we said we, we said we're gonna keep it 100 from day one, and so yeah, here, yeah. here here we are. Uh, we're we're located wherever you find your podcast. Also on YouTube, go ahead subscribe there as well. Keep it 100. I could you notice I cut the fountain off. Somebody said they were like, <laughs> they were like are you in the bathroom? <laughs> they were like, no, I know that didn't take that long. They were like, were you in the spa or the bathtub on the last pod? I was listening. I guess I didn't check it out on YouTube. <laughs> Like I was listening, I'm trying to like, what is that water I keep hearing? Yeah, so the, the, I cut the fountain off. Is that better? That, I like being outside when we do this, so that, that's all. But anyway, the the acoustics of it, I, I guess, threw some threw some folks off guard. Um, when we look at Wes Welker, right? I mean, what can we say about the job he's done with the Niners? Um, I feel like that's going to be a significant loss. You look at look at these youngsters, right? I mean. Yeah. I just point to the 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 leap of Jennings, you know, this year. Uh, Debo, look what look at the step he made this year. Um, I think BA as well. I, I think there's still a whole lot more to be said about him. Really, all of them, but that really, I think there's another. I think there's a giant leap out there waiting on on, on BA. Um, but when you look at Welker and his his impact, what, what do you think his impact has been? Well, you just talked about it. I mean, you look at these young receivers that um, it was his job to get them game ready and um, and get the best out of them and look at where they're going. Now, yeah, you're going to give credit to the player for doing the job, but there's a mindset that's set in that, in that room from day one. There's a certain type of player that you are looking to coach, um, certain mindset that you want those players to have as a coach because you know the philosophy of the team and the mindset of the team and, and, and how that is supposed to be approached. And then it's getting players to understand what's going on. Cause that's the coach's job. The, the first, when things aren't going right, if players aren't prepared to play, if players are blowing calls, they don't understand the offense or something. The first place that they're going is to the position coach. Number one, I'm gonna blame the coach before I blame the player. That's the first thing. If this guy doesn't understand, it's your job to make certain that they know it. It's your job to make certain that this player is prepared and you're doing all these things. And we have to say that, you know, it's, it's a very young group of receivers that are producing. And you got to give Welker some of the credit there. So, again, it's going to be who do you replace them with? Who comes in and takes over and helps that next um, leap? I, I 
can just look at the, the DB coach, Ray Rose. You've heard me mention him a lot on, on, the, on you know, since we've been doing this in the last few years. Um, Ray Bob taught me what it meant to be a Niner and how to play and his mindset and how aggressive it was and, and, and just how, I mean, just, just how confident and strong he, 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 the way he ran our DB room and the way he approached things that it was, it was always excelling, always competing, always winning, always finishing. And it didn't matter if you were going against Jerry Rice and Joe Montana was throwing the ball or you were going, you were going against some scrub. It didn't, it didn't matter. And that's, and, and I see that. And, and he took me to a certain level to learn to play the game a certain way so that the next coaches that came in, the fundamentals were there. So now it's going to be, can these next group of guys come through? Because the fundamentals are there. I think Welker did a very good job with that, teaching a young group of college receivers how to be professional receivers. And that's 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 what he's done. And... Um, now someone's going to have to pick it up from there. You, you talked about the first place you look is the position coach, right? And George Kittle was very complimentary of, of, uh, of John Embry, um, you know, once he, once he departed. But we've talked about this a lot on the pod, especially this season, right? Like, we, like we didn't really – like, when were we going to get that Kittle game? We didn't really see Kittle. Um, you know, this wasn't – the year we were expecting from him, right? Like th this didn't necessarily meet the standard, you know, that 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 he'd set for himself and that that we all expected. Uh, how much, I mean, but there was, we know there was so much other stuff going on though, right? So when you look at the quarterback position, you, you look at all these things, right? So, so like how much of that, I think is on Embry? Um, I'm not going to put Kittle. Uh, well, some, again, the first place you're going to look if your position isn't excelling, it's going to go to that coach. That's the first thing you're going to do uh, because we do know the talent that Kittle has. Now, this is the thing. I don't know. How hurt was he? How injured was he? What was going on? And then, the, but the other aspect of it, when Kittle's down, who's the next guy? Because it, it, it can't just be one guy. So, so what is the unit doing? You're going to look at it that way. Like what, what is this unit doing and, and how is it progressing? So you look at all of these things. So that's, that's part of it. Um, the offense and what you're doing, how you're going to utilize them. Uh, you know, some of these things that position coach doesn't have the ability to control. Uh, you, you know, I said it. some people don't like it when I say it. I told you tight ends aren't that important. They, they really aren't. You, you don't. I, I said it before when he was when, when his contract was up. I was like, yes, I like Kittle. Don't get me wrong. I like Kittle. But I was like, there's no reason to overpay Kittle. And, and, and you know, well, you, you, no one is overpaid. You get paid. You get paid what you negotiate. But I was like, they, they were negotiating against themselves. They over, over market. Yeah, they, there was no there was no reason to set his salary over market because no one else was going to do that because tight ends, you can function without them. Reason, case in point, this season, you made it to the NFC Championship. Kittle wasn't the reason. The tight ends, tight ends don't win you Super Bowls. It's a, it can be a valuable piece if you have a, a stellar one. So all of that, you know, you look at those things. That's part of it. Why are you going to go to the coach? Um, but another aspect of it, I, I heard, and I don't know how true it is, is that they wanted them to take a pay cut. And it could just be something in, internal with just that guy. Those things happen at times where it's just, there's a clashing of, and it has nothing to do with your position, your coaching. There's just a clashing of personalities um, because there's, you know, there's always an assumption that everyone on a coaching staff gets along. Just like <laughs> everyone on the team gets along. Sometimes you, you guys get rubbed the wrong way. Get out. You, you have got, because remember, you're dealing with a bunch of grown alpha men. Yeah. These coaches are the same way. And yeah, I got to take, you know, I'm the position coach. So I got to take it from the coordinator who's, you know, that's my boss. I got to take it from the head coach. That's my boss's boss. So I got to, and it all rolls downhill. Sometimes you get tired of it rolling up on your feet. And 
you may you may clap back and that clap back could be the issue. So there's so many different reasons why it could be that they're the best of friends and the numbers don't add up for something you're trying to do elsewhere. But all of the business comes in hand. Um, you know, like I said, he wasn't retained. He's under contract. He's not retained there. There is a reason why. Um, and if it was for his coaching and the development of the players, I, I think that would have, they would have said that. A hmm. uh, question for you, ED. What, what's more important than peace of mind? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You must've read this script right here. Nothing. No, no, no I'm, uh, no, I'm 54 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Well, NordVPN isn't quite yet 54 years old, but they are here to give you that peace of mind. While you're online and while all the threats and stuff you may face on a day-to-day -day basis on the internet, it is more important than ever to be sure that you have the best VPN you can get. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service, offering the fastest connectivity, most servers, and next-gen encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. So grab your exclusive, exclusive, I mean, it's for you, NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash believe or use the code believe, that's B-L-E-A-V, to get up to 70% off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. It's also risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Go ahead and visit the fine folks over at nordvpn.com. Uh, put a bow on this one. Uh, Embry, former assistant head coach and tight ends coach, going over to the Dolphins. Wes Welker leaving, going to the Dolphins as their wide receiver coach, joining uh, Mike McDaniel, former OC, who is now the Dolphins head coach. Uh, Richard Hightower, special teams coordinator, uh, hired by the Bears. Uh, Niners also lose their two assistant offensive line coaches, Butch Berry and Zach Yenzer. Uh, one promotion, that's Brian Flory. He was promoted from quality control to replace Embry as the tight end coach. So there's that. Uh, one thing before we get out of here, uh, big news when your former teammates got that got that knock. Uh, he's got that gold jacket now. And we've been talking about this for a couple of years here on this pod. And, 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 and your, your guy, Bryant Young, got that got that call. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what was that like for you? Um, we we saw, saw some of your stuff on, on social, but much, much you guys got together in a, in, in a huge celebration for him. Yeah, yeah, you know what? It wasn't even a huge celebration. It was a small little intimate thing that he put together. And I was glad that, you know, I got the invite that, you know, he gave me the knock and wanted me to be there. But that one, um, I couldn't be happier. Um, and I said, after all, out of all the teammates that I've had make the haul so far, um, that one right there, I'm really, really happy about because BY, BY from day one, I mean, he, when he was a pup and I didn't even get to play with him that long, but day one, when he stepped on the field, he stepped into the hole hell, hell, it might've been three months before he even opened his mouth. But when baby boy finally started talking, it was it, it, it was real. He played the game the way you're supposed to play it. BY epitomizes what it means to be a Niner. How it's not about competing because competing is in your DNA. It's about excelling. And it didn't matter what he did, how he did it. One of the most unselfish teammates I ever had. None of it was ever about him. None of it was none of he didn't care if his name was in the paper. He didn't care if you knew what he was doing. You just, he wanted us to know that you could count on him. And I told him this, I told him this right after, because I, I actually knew he had made it before he knew it. Oh, <laughs> no kidding. And I, and I was just, when I found out, I was so happy. And everyone, I was talking, Alex was there and I was talking to Alex Smith about it. And, and Alex said, the exact words to me, he he said the exact same thing that I'd said to my wife. He looked at me and he was like, E, I'm so happy. He was like, this just makes me feel so good. I'm so happy that this happened for BY. And that's how we all feel about it. That's how he played the game. And I told him, I said, man, 
You played the ultimate team sport. You will. You were the ultimate teammate. You never wanted the attention to be on you. You never cared about anything other than giving your all to the team. I said, I will. I hope that you can actually feel good, smile, and acknowledge the fact and be proud that people saw what you did and they want to give you that nod. And I told him, I said, man, just smile and celebrate it because you earned it because he was that dude. Yeah, very, very, very important piece um, to the organization and to that defense and, and what you all were able to accomplish. Um, don't win five without him, man. Don't win, don't win five. Nate Newton told me himself. Nate said, E, he said, when 9-7 lined up in that three technique, he said, the first time I ran into him, he said, I was like, oh, things are different now. <laughs> 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 Nate Newton told me that he said I was like oh wait whoa whoa that's different <laughs> and, and that that's by says it all you uh you also play with the late great Sam Sam Mills um we'll get yeah. your your thoughts on on Sam uh on the next one uh got it we uh we'll, we'll get out get out of here on that one congrats to to to, to your, your teammate Brian Young uh and from all the faithful, obviously, uh, they are pumped that that he's headed to Canton. Uh, he'll be there, you know, immortalized forever. So con congrats to him uh, for that that huge accomplishment. Uh, for my partner, Super Bowl champion Eric Davis, I'm Rashawn Haylock. That's going to do it for this edition of the Believe in 49ers podcast. We will see y'all later this week. Peace.